Olá, tudo bom, gente? Welcome to our class. I can see that you are already there. <laughs> so, what's up, guys? Boa noite. <laughs> so, um, let me see who's there. So, Charles, tudo bom, Charles? Pink Pearl. Pink Pearl, we have to thank you again for the amazing card you sent us. Guys, I can even uh, explain the feeling. It was really nice and thoughtful to receive a card from you. This is very, very nice. Thank you so much. It was very kind. So, how are you guys? Tell me, are you doing great? Are you having a good evening? <laughs> I hope so. So let me see who else is there. Uh, Gary, to the bone. Who else? Chris, Elizabeth, Shadow. <laughs> Boa noite, gente. So how are you tonight? Como vocês estão? I hope you are doing great. And it would be awesome to know where you guys are talking from. So, uh, tell us the city where you are right now uh, in your nationality. This would be awesome so we, we all can know uh, each other more. So, let me see. Uh, Pink Pearl is saying, I missed a couple of classes and last few of the journey, but I need to catch up. I may do a bit of study tomorrow. This is a good plan. It sounds good. Uh, but don't worry, the classes are all recorded here. So if you uh, missed some of them, you can just look in our channel and find these classes and you can follow uh, and watch these classes normally, okay? So, um, just checking uh, the messages here. Uh, what else, guys? Let me see. Mm. Ana, tudo bom? Hi, boa noite. Who else is there? So Pink Pearl is asking, is there a new journey coming up? I got the emails, but I was a bit confused. Well, uh, the Portuguese fluency journey was two weeks ago, actually. Um, it was from Monday until the Friday, this two weeks ago. Uh, and we actually don't know uh, when we are going to, to do a next journey like this. And if we are doing another journey uh, because we are always finding new stuff to do, new content to provide, so maybe we'll change, maybe we'll do it again. We are not sure, unfortunately. But we are here on YouTube every week uh, on Tuesday evening and also on Instagram Thursdays uh, afternoon. We also have live streaming there. Um, and of course guys you know that we have our whatsapp uh, group so if you want to join us there you will receive uh, free content twice a week we send dialogues for you to listen and practice your oral comprehension uh, with transcription so you can check what you listened uh, and translation if you need uh, more details uh, we also send the, the study material that we use in this class through the WhatsApp group. So if you haven't joined us yet in this group, you should uh, do it right now. Um, you can send us, you can, you can PM us, sending a direct message, uh, a private message to us um, with the with your phone number and we can just add you there or if you follow us on Instagram we have the links there so you can just find the link through the WhatsApp to the WhatsApp group and then you will be automatically directed to this group okay 
So let me see what else uh, you guys are answering. So Gary is from Oxford, Inglaterra. How cool is that? Muito legal. Actually, Adriele and I, we've been to Oxford once. We went to, to Wales, actually, uh, to a conference on linguistics. And then when we came back to London, we decided to, to do this little trip. So we went to Oxford because we were uh, we really wanted to to know this uh, city and it's amazing. It's very very nice. So cool. <laughs> so Jacob's there. Ele é canadense. He's Canadian and he lives in Toronto. Ele mora em Toronto. Que legal. Uh, Charles. Is from Florida, USA. Charles mora em Orlando, na Florida. What else? So Holly Ann is saying that she's a teacher. Uh, I sorry, I think uh, it's a guy. Now I got it. Oi, professora. Greg from Ohio, that's it. So he's saying hi uh, to me and his name is Greg and he's from Ohio. So what's up, Ohio? <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I guess that's it. So Anna from Kentucky. Very, very nice. Welcome, Anna. Uh, so, and safe from London. Very nice. Hey, safe. How are you? So, uh, safe is saying that it was raining the whole day, all day long. Uh, estava chovendo o dia todo. And I can say that here in my city, it's quite the same. It's raining the whole day. <laughs> um... Yes, Chris is saying he lives in Colorado in the United States. Guys, this is awesome. So we can see that we have people from uh, all of the latitudes, <laughs> right? Uh, in many different parts of the this small world, it seems, right? <laughs> so uh, I would like to welcome you all to our class. Uh, if it's the first time and uh, you were kind of figuring out how things work, uh, don't worry, you will understand everything with time. And for us, it's a pleasure to have you here. And if you, if you are already a student uh, following us uh, for a while, we are very glad to have you here again. So it's it's amazing, guys, to, to create this community as we are doing uh, with all of you. So welcome. Um, let me share with you my screen so you can see uh, some of the topics of today. Let me see if you can already see uh, the same as I'm seeing right now. Well, as you may know, uh, I guess most of you belong to our WhatsApp group. So if you, if you are there and if you also follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you already know that today's topic is future in Portuguese. So maybe this is first time for some of you checking how future work, works in Portuguese. Maybe you already know. So if you already know this, it can work as a review, uh, but if you don't know it yet, we'll try to do it the simplest way possible, okay? So just don't forget to share this class with more people, so more people can know about us. And when you do it, when you maybe you just uh, get a screenshot of uh, what's going on here, then you can use the hashtags we are putting here. So, aula do yes, yes class, yepper, which means you are a yes Portuguese student. So, this is the coolest. <laughs> Portuguese do yes, so Portuguese from yes or yes Portuguese. 
<laughs> in Portuguese. And Yepper Squad, um, which, by the way, it's a, is a hashtag created by our uh, students, the students from our course, our private course. This is so cool guys so you can use all of these hashtags and uh, it will be easier for us to find you if you share if you post something using these ones these hashtags okay so as I was saying today we are talking about the future uh, and if you are in our whatsapp group you received this material over here so we send it uh, on Tuesday to use during this class we have tonight. So if you got it, you have this uh, on your hand. So you, maybe you print or you're using your computer. In your computer. So uh, it's good because you can use to take notes, to follow the class and etc. Okay, guys. Um, before we really start, it's interesting for you to understand that actually we have two kinds of future, um, two different ways to talk about the future in Portuguese. So we have uh, this verb tense called, let me use our board to tell you that. So we have the futuro do presente, futuro do presente, uh, which is a verb tense uh, that we, we also use in Portuguese, but it's more used in formal ways. So if you are writing something uh, in formal ways, uh, in formal uh, documents, um, you will always use this verb tense, but also uh, if you are talking in a more formal context, you're going to use this uh, verb tense. But what is being used in Portuguese language nowadays here in Brazil is not actually this verb tense, it's another one, which I call uh, futuro composto, uh, which can be translated as compound future, because it uses two verb forms to to, to get the whole sense of future, okay? We'll see in a few minutes. But this is what we have. So when talking about the future, we have futuro do presente, which is the traditional verb tense we have in grammar, and we still use it, but in more formal contexts. And this one we call futuro composto, which is the one we use in our daily conversations, when talking to people, even in, if I, because when we say that futuro do presente is used in formal contexts, maybe you think if you are in your uh, workplace, you should use it when talking to colleagues or your boss, but actually not even in this context, we would use futuro do presente. We would use more this other verb tense, futuro composto. So, uh, I think we can define the difference, the main difference between them is that futuro do presente, besides being more formal, is more used in written uh, language, okay? So, when writing something, especially in formal contexts, we are going to use this one. In informal contexts and even in work space, which is more formal, we are going to use this other verb tense, okay, because it dominates um, language nowadays. So the Portuguese spoken by real people in daily life normally will use this form to talk about things that will happen in the future, being something close to us or something distant okay so no matter the distance of the thing we are talking about we are going to use this one which is the one we are going to study today the futuro composto okay so i would love to know uh 
if you know something about these two verb tenses or if you have studied some any of them or both of them so you can use the chat to answer me to say if you have done it before or not it would be awesome to have some feedback from you while you do that i'm just checking your comments so let me see so uh Chris is saying he's from Colo Colorado, so actually he lives in Colorado, so that's, that's nice. Um, Kevin's from Iowa, Iowa, <laughs> am I saying it right? <laughs> this is a tricky word for, for us Brazilian. Um, let me see, what else? Oh, so Charles uh, remembered me. And Pink Pearl as well uh, of another hashtag which is pretty cool. Portoholic. This is awesome, guys. I love it. Let me add in here. So, um, Portoholic. So, if you are addicted to Portuguese language, like you really want to study it, you can use it also. It's very, very cool. I love it. <laughs> Portoholic. Uh, very good guys so um, let me see the comments so Jacob saying uh, that he has studied uh, both forms in the future cool so what about you guys have you done it have you also studied these two forms or not well why are you answer this let me make some introduction to why we are studying future right now so if you got this material you probably read this before but anyway i'm telling you that the reason why we are studying this study right now well with the new years coming we start to to think about the future right uh, at least uh, a very close future less than one month right uh, and it's common to make the New Year's resolutions where we try to organize mentally or writing uh, what we are going to do in the next year or at least what we are planning to do in the next year. So to do that uh, in Portuguese, we need to learn how to say it. And because of this, we need to understand these verb tense this future we use in Portuguese. So that's why we are seeing future today, okay? So uh, what we are going to do today is to study this structure, understand how it works, and then we are going to do some New Year's resolutions together, okay? So we can do some of them here to practice to start uh, practice this verb tense and also as a promise of change for the next year actually for the next next decade yes guys have you already uh, thought about it it's a new decade this is this is a new opportunity for all of us to start over to make new habits abandon the bad ones you know so that's, um, that's what our class is about, okay? It's about this, the New Year's resolutions. Um, so we are going to do that and of course we can just start the practice and you can do it uh, after the class uh, by your own. So the whole list with your New Year's resolutions in Portuguese. How cool is that? <laughs> so let's go let me see uh, if you have any more comments mm -hmm. so uh, most of you is saying um pouquinho a little bit some not yet uh, okay <laughs> Kira is saying meu Deus a new decade yes I I hadn't thought about it. Uh, I, I think it was like two, one week ago, someone said that, uh, I think on TV, 
maybe uh, it, it was they were talking about uh, the next year and everything and then someone said yeah it's a new decade and then I was oh gosh it's a new decade I haven't thought about it yet so it's yeah time flies guys and we can say this in Portuguese it's literally the same let me show you we can say o tempo voa tempo voa time flies okay um so i guess that's it so let's see guys how this verb tense works so let's go so remember, we are checking the future we call futuro composto, which is the one we use uh, the most here in Brazil nowadays, okay? In our daily conversations, uh, especially in informal situations, okay? So check this sentence, guys. Em 2020, eu vou aprender português. Em 2020, eu vou aprender português. So... Let's translate this sentence. In 2020, it's an interesting number, right? <laughs> Does someone uh, believe in numerology? <laughs> it must have something going on in this number. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> translating. In 2020, I'm going to learn Portuguese. How cool is this resolution? I bet this must be, uh, or that this should be in your New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Maybe this is the number one uh, thing to add to your list, right? So, in 2020, I'm going to learn Portuguese. Em 2020, eu vou aprender português. Let's understand what is going on there in this verb tense, which, by the way, it's very very simple okay you were about to see let me just check if you have any questions uh, yes I guess every everyone's fine so guys I put uh, here the structure we can use when putting a sentence in the future Okay, so when we want to say something in the future, we are going to follow this. First, we put the subject. So, uh, I'll talk about it later. So, something to work as a subject. It can be um, a, a pronoun like eu, você, ele, ela. So, I, you, he, she. Then we'll add the verb ir, which means to go, okay, in the present tense. And then finally we use the verb, the main verb, the verb that uh, includes the action we are talking about, in the infinitive form. Uh, it misses a ni here, guys, okay? So that's the structure. Subject verb ir in the present tense and the main verb of the action we are talking about in the infinitive form, okay? Notice that I put uh, the same color for these elements here in this sentence uh, as they are in here in the structure. So this way you can recognize. Notice the subject is here, okay? This is the subject in this in this case in this sentence. It changes a lot. Uh, in the present tense, with the subject eu will be vou, eu vou, and finally the the main verb in the infinitive form. The main verb, uh, which means the the action I'm talking about, is aprender to learn. Okay. So, eu vou aprender, okay? So, just remembering a little bit of the subject, guys. Let me find some. 
space in here. Um, so, just uh, to remember the pronouns that can work as subjects. So, for the first person singular, I, I have eu. Then, to the second person singular, you, we have você. And the third person singular, uh, to refer to something or someone in the masculine form, we are going to use ele. And something or someone in the feminine form, ela, right? And we also have a gente. Do you remember uh, this pronoun? It's not exactly a pronoun, but we use as a pronoun. These guys just mean uh, we. So it works semantically. So the meaning is the first person plural. So it's you and someone else or a group of people, including you. Okay. So, first person plural, like we in English. But uh, when we are conjugating this pronoun, it, work as, it works as third person singular. So, as ele, ela. Okay? Just remember. So, it means that when we put a verb with this pronoun, a gente, we should put uh, this verb at the same form as we put for ela or ele, okay? Mm, let's remember more. Uh, we have also nós, we, right? Which is the formal form for the first person plural. Um, then second, uh, second person plural, vocês. Just add an S to the pronoun você. And third person plural, we have eles and elas. Okay? Just adding an S for each one. Okay? Just a quick reminder of the pronouns, the subject pronouns we have in Portuguese, which we call pronomes do caso reto. <laughs> a weird name, right? Let me see your comments, guys. Uh, oh, so Pink Pearl has already a resolution, a very cool one. Na nova década, quero visitar o Brasil e aprender português. Muito bem, that's it, correct, perfect. Nino, uh, oh yes, he's just remembering that a gente, as a pronoun, we write separately. And if we put it together, we have another word, which means agent, okay? Like police agent. Uh, safe. I'm not sure. Uh, I think you were talking with Adisha about something, because you were saying that uh, something ends with NDO. If you want to clear to me, I can help you, okay? Uh, let me see. I think that's it. So, Charles is asking, nós uh, equals we? Yes, that's the same, okay? So, nós is like we. Let us put the equivalent in English. So, eu is equivalent to I, você, you, ele, he, ela, she, a gente is the same as we, nós the same as we. So the difference is only in Portuguese, okay? In English we will translate the same way. Você is you for, for plural form, they. Uh, let me do like this. They. <laughs> it will be only one translation for both here. So, eles and elas will be translated as they. Okay? Um, that's it. So, here, guys, in this place of the subject, 
we can use all of these pronouns over here as well as uh, first names. I can say Ludmila vai aprender português. Ludmila is going to learn Portuguese. Um, I can use many names, many first names, like Ludmila, Adriele e Otávio vão aprender português. So Ludmila, Adriele e Otávio are going to learn Portuguese. Uh, we can use also nouns to refer to someone or something, like os meninos vão aprender português. So the boys are going to learn Portuguese. So what I mean here is that you can use in this place of the subject a pronoun, eu, você, ele, ela, a first name, Ludmila, Adriele, or a noun representing something like os meninos, a menina, and etc. Okay? Well, the second important thing here is the verb ir, which means to go. This verb, guys, as you can notice in here and in here, has to be in the present tense. So, the only, uh, I would say, the, the hardest thing about this structure, this future structure, would be to know the present tense of the verb ir. And let's admit, this is not so tricky, right? Because this verb is a very, uh, it's, a, it's a verb that we use a lot. So, you will memorize this verb anyway, even though you, you haven't studied future yet, you will need this verb before, because it's a very much employed verb, so you need it, okay? So, let's check the conjugation of the verb ich in the present tense. So, you will, we will see now how this verb works with each uh, subject. Okay, so this is the thing that you have to memorize. The only thing you have to really memorize is this conjugation. Okay, so let's check. So pay attention to my pronunciation right now, guys. Eu vou, você vai, nós vamos, vocês vão. Okay, I'm going to read it again and you can repeat just after me, ok? Let's go! Eu vou, você vai, nós vamos, vocês vão, ok? So, vou, vai, vamos, vão. Well, guys, as I just told you, this is the thing that you may, that you will need to memorize, but also, as I said, you need this verb anyway, uh, so it's really important to know its conjugation. And notice here, guys, that we put você, ele, ela, and a gente in the same line, because they all behavior the same, which means that they all will have the same form for this verb. The same happens here in the last line. Vocês, eles, and elas will behavior the same. So, uh, all of them will use the same form of a verb. Okay? So, that's it. So, depending on the subject you use, eu, você, nós, the verb here will change according to the subject. Okay? The last part, the last thing to put in this structure is the main verb, which should be in the infinitive form. Well, if you know the action, you know the infinitive form. So, if I want to talk about uh, comer, to eat, I just put the verb like this, comer. If I want to talk about uh, estudar, to study, I just put the verb like this, estudar. If I want to talk about dormir, sleep, I just put the verb dormir in this form. Okay? 
So here, guys, is the position where we just add the verb, the verb, uh, the main verb, the action we are talking about in the future, uh, in the infinitive form. Remember, the infinitive in Portuguese always ends with letter R. So we have these terminations. Remember, guys, let me just find more space in here. So the verbs will end in ar, er, or ir. We have some exceptions, some verbs we end in or, but the most common ones are these three. Ach, er, ir. Uh, so, like the verb sonhar, to dream. Here, like the verb correr, to run. Here, like the verb do mir to sleep and here just as a curiosity the verb por uh, which means to put okay actually we will consider this verb from the second conjugation but as we are talking about termination endings it's a different ending okay so just remember that the infinitive form will always end with or letra r okay let me see if you have questions. Um. Oh, Kitty is saying something important. I always want to conjugate a gente like nós. Um, this is important to pay attention because a gente and nós have the same meaning. They both mean first person plural. So they can be translated as we, but they behavior in a different way. So the verb with uh, nós, as you can see here, it's always different from the version we have here for the third person singular, which, which is where a gente is. So pay attention, okay? This is important. Uh, Safe is saying, I like to use a gente more. Safe, I believe you are with most of Brazilian population because most of us use a gente. At least here in my region, uh, and I can say in Southeast in general, people use more a gente. Okay? Mm, that's it. So, um, Let's see now some time expressions. Yes, as we are talking about the future, it's also important to know these time expressions, right? So I just uh, organized some of them to talk about uh, the future. So we can say if we are talking about a year, just like this, em 2020, meaning in 2020, okay? We also can say when we want to give um, a sense of something that will happen, actually that can happen, but it's not certain, okay? So you can say um dia, so it means one day, so you want this to happen, but it's not sure. Amanhã, which means tomorrow, depois de amanhã, after tomorrow and here guys I put these three uh, actually we have two options of expressions and I just changed them according to the unit we are using so the first possibility is with the the word semana which means week the second one is uh, with the word miss which means month and the last one is the uh, is with the word ano which means year okay so we have two possibilities to talk about the next week month or year so we can say in portuguese like this na próxima semana or na semana que vem so they both mean next week literally guys here we are saying the first one in the next week 
and the second sentence is literally as in the week that comes okay but the meaning is that next week uh, so we can say both ways we can say na próxima semana or na semana que vem uh, both are possible and correct about month we can also use both we can say no próximo mês or no mês que vem just pay attention because miss is a masculine noun because of this we change the preposition the contraction between the preposition and article here so instead of na we are going to use no also uh, the adjective changes so instead of próxima we use próximo okay and here the only thing that will change with the second option of expression is the preposition so instead of na we'll say no okay no próximo mês no mês que vem and the last uh, sentence the last example with year so year ano is also masculine that's why we use the same preposition and uh, adjective as the last example no próximo ano or no ano que vem okay so reading all of them again em 2020 um dia amanhã depois de amanhã na próxima semana or na semana que vem no próximo mês or no mês que vem, no próximo ano, or no ano que vem. Ok? So, let me see if you have questions now, guys. Mm. Let me see. Next week, next month, next year, Sonino is translating these expressions. Kira is asking if one of the versions are more formal than the other. If you are talking about these options of expressions, I would say the second one is a little bit more informal. Semana que vem. If I was writing a text in a formal context, I would prefer, uh, I would rather use the first one. Okay? Na próxima semana. It's a little bit more formal, but in daily conversation, both are used. Okay? Um, let me see. Safe is asking, can you say, até vejo na semana que vem? Até vejo. Uh, I really, I didn't understand, I didn't get this first part, até vejo. I, is it? Te vejo, see you. If it's see you, we could see, we could say, vejo você semana que vem, or te vejo semana que vem, like this. Uh, te vejo, or vejo você na semana que vem, ok? Uh, meaning, see you next week, ok? Then it's right. So Kevin is asking, what does no and na mean? No and na, it's a variation of the preposition in. Of course, it's a little bit complicated to translate prepositions because even though in corresponds to em in Portuguese, sometimes uh, the language will behave in a different way. So, even though they are equivalent uh, and they are one, the translation of the other, uh, maybe in Portuguese I will use a different preposition with a verb, and while in English you use the equivalent to another preposition. You get? So, it's interesting to understand the idea, but it's important to know that we can literally translate because... It can work, but it cannot, okay? So, um, em, 
is equivalent to in and when we say na we are actually say en mais a so the preposition in plus the definite article the in english we have the and in portuguese we have a and o feminine and masculine forms okay so when we have no we have em plus o okay so literally when we say na we are saying in the no in the because in english we don't have a definite article for masculine and another one for feminine so we'll translate the same way in english but in portuguese we have this difference okay uh, so now that we have seen the structure uh, under remember the subject we can use the conjugation of the verb ir and just saw the time expressions let's see some examples so here again we can see the structure and some sentences so check this sentence guys no ano que vem eu vou estudar português todos os dias the second one em 2020 a gente vai fazer atividades físicas três vezes por semana third one no próximo ano nós vamos viajar mais and fourth os yappers vão aprender português so let's understand this sentence so the first one no ano que vem eu vou estudar português todos os dias so next year I'm going to study Portuguese every day. This is a good resolution, guys. You can also add to your list, right? Second sentence. Um, em 2020, a gente vai fazer atividades físicas três vezes por semana. So, in 2020, we are going to do uh, physical activities, some exercises, Three times a week. This is good to me, guys. I need it. <laughs> Third sentence. In the next year, we are going to travel more. Yes, let's do it, all of us, guys. Travel is the best thing, right? And the last one. Os yappers vão aprender português. This is a promise, right? Let's do this, guys. The yappers uh, are going to learn Portuguese. Okay? So, I would love to know if you have any trouble uh, so far. And if you are getting everything. So, did you understand the whole structure? How to use the subject plus the verb to go in the present tense. And finally, the main verb. So, if you have any questions, you can use the chat right now and I can just help you. Notice that, again, I put the subject in the same color. So, the subjects, the subjects are eu, a gente, nós, os yappers, okay? Also, the verb ir is in green. So, here you can see uh, the full conjugation of the, bird, the verb according to the subject used. So, eu vou, a gente vai, nós vamos. Os yappers, meaning eles, they, vão. And the main verb in the infinitive form. Estudar, fazer, viajar, aprender. Notice that, as we discussed, all of these main verbs are in the infinitive form. That's why they end in R. Okay? So... Let me see if... If I have any questions... Mm. 
Let me see. I think there's no question so far. So another important thing we have, guys, is to understand how to put the sentences in the negative form. So in the negative form, we just have to put to add the verb, the, the word known, which means don't or not. Um, and the position, guys, is this one between the subject and the verb ich, okay? So check this example. Eu não vou desistir dos meus sonhos. Eu não vou desistir dos meus sonhos. So this mean, means uh, I'm not going to give up on my dreams. Good resolution, right? Eu não vou desistir dos meus sonhos. I'm not going to give up on my dreams. Second sentence. A gente não vai ser pessimista. A gente não vai ser pessimista. Meaning, we are not going to be pessimist. Okay? So, notice that the negative word, no, will be placed between the subject and the verb ich. Got it? <laughs> so, okay? So, guys, tell me something. Did you understand? Are you fine with this new structure? Is it okay? Because if you are, we can just make a small practice right now. So, just before we write our resolutions, let's practice a little bit. So, tell me. Is everything okay? Do you have any questions? Did you get the whole structure and let's say guys it's pretty easy right to say things in the future in Portuguese it's pretty easy because uh, sometimes uh, students complain about the past because of uh, we have lots of endings lots of different terminations and we have two pasts we have the pretérito perfeito pretérito imperfeito and people get confused this is not a problem when we are talking about future, right? So, this is good, guys, because uh, I know that Portuguese has lots of information and it's not the case for the future. I think it's simpler. What do you think? Do you agree? Charles is saying, Eu entendi. Great, Charles. Eu acho que eu entendi. That's it. Mm, well, uh, let's do this small practice, guys, then. So, I prepared just these three sentences for us to put in Portuguese. So, let's concentrate in this first one, okay? I'm going to sleep more. I would like you to put this sentence in Portuguese. And you can write here on the chat. I can check and I can see if you did it right. So remember the structure, okay? If you have the study material, you can just check it. And let's go. Let's put this sentence in Portuguese. I'm going to sleep more. So this is a, re a resolution for next year, okay? I'm going to sleep more. How this will be in Portuguese? So, Kira is saying, Entendi. Great. I'm happy you did uh, understand, Kira, this new verb tense. This is great. And she's saying, Eu vou ficar gostosa no ano de 2020. Okay? Just add this preposition. No ano de 2020. Or you can just say, em 2020. Okay? Vou <laughs> ficar gostosa. She will, she will get uh, hot, we could say, maybe. <laughs> Porque eu vou surfar nas praias de Fortaleza. Oh, how delicious. This is amazing. 
So Kian is saying, yes, thank you, you're welcome, de nada, Kian. Charles is saying, preciso prática. Yes, always, guys, when we learn a new verb tense, uh, specific grammar point, we need practice. This is always like this. So don't worry. We just saw the whole structure and now we can just practice. That's why I'm giving you, in a few minutes, a homework. Okay? I like homeworks. Um, Oh, so now I have the translations. Eu, I'm going to sleep more. Eu vou dormir mais. Okay, guys? Eu vou dormir mais. I, I guess most of you did it correctly. Congratulations! Very, very good. So just pay attention. Eu... Vou, remember the verb is the verb ir, to go, so eu vou. To sleep, in Portuguese, is dormir. So you just put it in the infinitive form, eu vou dormir mais, more, ok? Eu vou dormir mais. Let's see the second sentence. So, um, my boyfriend isn't going to eat too much. <laughs> okay, so my boyfriend is not going to eat too much. How do we put this sentence in Portuguese? <laughs> this is funny, guys, but how will it be in Portuguese? So remember, the subject here is my boyfriend, so the verb ir will change a little bit. It won't be like in this first sentence. Pay attention. Mm. Oh, I can see some results. So, meu namorado, boyfriend means namorado, right? Meu namorado não vai comer <laughs> Demais! That's it, guys. So, let's see. Meu namorado não vai comer demais. <laughs> so, he will eat less. <laughs> Meu namorado não vai comer demais. Ok? So, you are making a resolution for your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Meu namorado não vai comer demais. So, here, guys, when we say, oops, meu namorado, this is the same as saying um, he, so ele. So, the verb ir has to agree with ele. So, checking here, you can see that ele uses the verb in this form, vai. So, that's why we put vai here, because meu namorado is the same as ele. Ele vai. Meu namorado vai. But the sentence is in the negative form. That's why we add não between the subject, meu namorado, and the verb ir. Vai. Ok? Meu namorado não vai comer. The main verb, demais, too much. Ok? <laughs> Uh, that's it! Very good, Charles, Gary, very well, Kira, Adisha, very good, guys, you're doing a great job. Last one, okay? Last one. So, we are going to watch more Brazilian movies. We are going to watch more Brazilian movies. So, how do we put this sentence in Portuguese? And this is a great tip for you guys, by the way. A good uh, New Year's resolution. <laughs> mm, so, how does this sentence will be in Portuguese? We are going to watch more Brazilian movies. We are going to watch more Brazilian movies. Mm. 
I'll put this the, the first nos. Nos. We means nos. What about the rest? Mm. Vamos assistir mais filmes brasileiros. You got it right, guys. Very well. Very well, Jacob. Kira. Charles. <laughs> Pink Pearly saying, I gotta find more Brazilian movies. Guys, do you want me to recommend you Brazilian movies? Because I can do it. Uh, I used to do it and we even have some highlights on Instagram about these movies, but I can keep doing that. Uh, so very, very good, guys. You're doing great. So, nós vamos assistir mais filmes Brasileiros. Actually, formally, we should put a preposition here. Nós vamos assistir a mais filmes brasileiros. But as we taught you, we teach you the Portuguese really spoken by people here in Brazil. I have to tell you that people don't put this preposition in a regular conversation. People just say like this. Nós vamos assistir mais filmes brasileiros. Ok? So, it's perfect. We are going to watch more Brazilian movies. Nós vamos assistir mais filmes brasileiros. Guys, that's it. You made it. So, isn't it easy? The structure is not difficult. I'm not saying that you should uh, do it without blinking, you know. I know it takes time, because maybe for some of you it's the first time you are seeing this new verb tense, but what I mean is that uh, it's not a tricky verb tense, okay? All you have to know, really, is the conjugation of the verb ir, because if you know the action, you know the infinitive form of this action. I mean, if you know the action in Portuguese, you know the infinitive of the verb. Because the name of the verb, the name of the action, is the name in the infinitive form. Okay? Then you have to decide the subject, uh, who you were talking about. Me, myself, yourself, some, someone else. Then you have to know it to make the agreement with the verb ir. Just this. And if you know the conjugation of the verb ir, you will be able to put the agreement correctly. Okay? So, this is something that most of you already know, the subjects we can use. As I said, if you know the action, you know the infinitive form. So, what it takes memory from you, indeed, here, is just the conjugation of the verb ir. Okay? Of course, you have to practice and that's why I have homework from you, for you. Guys, what I'm suggesting is to you to do your New Year's resolutions in Portuguese. So, I'll show you how to do it. So, let's start with the title. You can write Resolu de ano novo. So, New Year's resolutions. Literally the same, ok? Resoluções de ano novo. Then, you start like this. Um, em 2020, eu vou aprender português. Ok? So, in 2020, I'm going to learn Portuguese. So, then you can make a list of five resolutions or ten, if you prefer. And this is a great way to practice this new structure we just learned. It's a great way. And try to, to do the sentence, even though it's about some kind of action you don't know yet in Portuguese. You can Google the verb in, in Portuguese if it's a verb you don't know yet. Okay? The conjugation of the verb e you have in this study material. And just 
go deep in this new structure, just dive in this new structure. So I have this homework to you and I would love you to post it and tag us. Then I can see your resolutions. You can PM us, send, send us uh, these resolutions so we can correct for you. It will be amazing to see them. Uh, but don't forget to do it. This is a way to practice. If you just watch this class and never do anything about it, you will forget it. So start to practice. This is a good way to do it. I think it's nice in the end of the year to, to make this balance, you know, about the whole year we are finishing. So looking back, see everything you did, the things that you don't want to do anymore, the new things you want to do. And a good way to make this balance, you know, it's making the resolutions. And this is a way uh, to organize everything that you want to do, to establish new goals, and to practice Portuguese in real context, okay? So, do that. Nice homework, okay? And tag us. You can uh, share in your Instagram, your Facebook, tag us, then we will know everything that you are planning for 2020, the new decade, a nova decade. <laughs> so, did you like, guys? I hope you have enjoyed this class. Did you? I would love to have some feedback from you. Let me see what you were thinking. Uh, oh, that, that's nice, Charles. Charles is saying, not easy, but you make it as accessible. That's great. Great feedback. Thank you, Charles. Uh, and Kira agrees. That, that's good, guys. This is our goal here. Uh, it's to make things more accessible for you, guys. I like to do these structures because some of you may have this... Um, how can I say this? You know when you have this very uh, organized mind, like a mathematic mind, can I say like this? And maybe if you are like this, you, you like to have these structures, maybe this helps you to, to see the whole thing, you know? So that's why I try to do it for you guys. And of course, when you start to use it, it will become simpler, okay? So Kitty is asking, post it where? Um, if you have Instagram, you can post there. If you have Facebook, also there. And then just um, tag us, then you will be able to see. Or you can send us uh, through direct, direct message. Then we can see everything you are writing down. Uh, Instagram would be awesome because we are always there so we can check it. Uh, so, Instagram, Facebook, uh, then you can send or tag us, then we can see you. Uh, well, I, I was just trying to read everything. I guess that's it. So, if you have any questions, of course, you can reach us. You can ask your questions here on the chat or even in the comment section that will remain here uh, in this video. Or you can PM us on Instagram here, everywhere, guys. We are everywhere, you know it, right? So post if you, if you want to or just send us and we can see everything correct, okay? But the most important thing is practice. Practice this, because this will help you, okay? Guys, I hope you have enjoyed our class. Um, don't forget to share with more people about us using the hashtags we have so more people can know about us. And I will already tell you that next Thursday on Instagram at 1 p.m. EST, I'll be live there. Um, in, in the class, practice, 
practicing the future. Okay, this is structure we just learned. So do the resolutions and wait for me next Thursday on Instagram to practice. Okay? I think that's it. Muito obrigada, gente. Foi ótimo estar com vocês. It was great to have you here, guys. And I hope to see you next time here on YouTube or uh, sooner on Instagram next Thursday. Okay? Um, I guess that's it. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. And see you next time. Tchau, tchau. <laughs>